I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on exponential equations. Some of the students have asked one question that is how to solve exponential equations. They mean to say that sometimes in solving exponential equations we use logarithms and sometimes we don't use. How do we decide when to use logarithms? So let me cut down the question to when to use logs to solve exponential equation. Okay, so that is the question which we are going to answer. So for that, I have taken six examples here. We'll see solution of each one of them. You can always pause the video, copy these questions, answer them and then look into my suggestions. Now you will notice that these examples, like the first one, we have 2 to the power of x and 32. We can always write 32 in the form of 2, right? So let me take up this solution itself. So we have 2 to the power of x equals to 32, right? Now I could write 32 as what? I could write 2 to the power of x as equals to 2 to the power of 5. We know 2 to the power of 5 is 32. Now, when you have the same base, in that case, exponents should be exactly same. And therefore, we get x equals to 5 as our solution. So that could be a very simple solution to this equation. We do not use any logarithms here straight away. We are trying to make the same base and then compare the exponents. So this strategy is followed in most of the solutions, especially when you can make the same base. So these equations here are the ones where you could solve without logarithms. Correct? Now let's look into the last two questions here. 2 to the power of x equals to 5. So the base is 5. It could be 5 to the power of 1, right? Here clearly, 4 to the power of x and 3 to the power of something. We have different bases. So in these two equations, we have different bases. So to solve them, we have to use logarithms. So that is the key. So whenever the bases are different, we have to use logarithms. So let me give them a different color. You get the idea, right? So we have solved the first one, very simple. Now we'll see the solution of the rest one by one. The last two, we will see how to use logarithms to solve them. Perfect. Let's take them. So now here is the second question. We have 4 times 2 to the power of 2x equals to 2 to the power of 3x minus 2. Now, as you know, 4 could be written as 2 square. So, I am substituting 4 with 2 square. So, I am rewriting this equation as 2 square times 2 to the power of 2x equals to 2 to the power of 3x minus 2. So, the base is 2 now for all. Since we have same base, we can apply the rules for exponentials. So here, when you multiply, the powers get added up. So we get 2 to the power of 2 plus 2x on the left side. And on the right side, we have 2 to the power of 3x minus 2. Now, when you get the same base, then the exponent should be equal. And so we could write this as 2 plus 2x equals to 3x minus 2. Now, it's a linear equation which we can solve, taking 2x to the right side and this minus 2 to the left. So, we get 2 plus 2 equals to 3x minus 2x and that gives us x equals to 4. So, straight away, we get a solution x equals to 4. So, I hope this strategy is absolutely clear. Now, in some equations, you will always like to check your solution, right? So, let me write down here, check solution. So I'm not going to check solution here, but what you should do here is that you should plug it in back to the equation and see whether you really get the right solution or not. So let's move on. And now let's look into this equation. We need to solve 
2 to the power of x square equals to 32 times 2 to the power of 4x. Now you could write 32 as 2 to the power of 5. By doing so, we'll write each and every component as power of 2, right? So let's rewrite this. So we have 2 to the power of x square equals to 2 to the power of 5, that is for 32, within bracket 2 to the power of 4x. Since the base are same, we'll apply the rules. On the right side, we could write this as 2 to the power of 5 plus 4x. Now, the base are same, exponents should also be equal. So, x squared should be equal to 5 plus 4x. Now, that becomes a quadratic equation. In the previous example, we got a linear equation. This time, we have a quadratic equation. So, there could be exponential equations which could be written in quadratic form and then solved. Bringing the terms on the right to the left, we get x squared minus 4x minus 5 equals to 0. Now this can be factored as x minus 5 times x plus 1 equals to 0. So the solution of this quadratic equation is, so for, let me rewrite the equation here, x minus 5 times x plus 1 equals to 0. One solution is that x equals to 5 and the other solution is that x equals to minus 1. So there are two solutions to this particular equation. Now it's a good idea to check whether these solutions work or not, right? So sometimes we may have extraneous roots, right? So I'm not saying that one of them is extraneous, but I'm just trying to check it out, right? So if I substitute 5 here, right, so what I get is 2 to the power of 5 squared, and on this side, I get 2 to the power of 5 plus 4 times 5, correct? We get 2 to the power of 25, and here also we have 2 to the power of 25. Both are equal, so that is perfect. So 5 works. Now let's try minus 1. So we get 2 to the power of minus 1 squared. We'll write equal to later. Let me check the right side. So we are actually checking this equation, right? And we have 2 to the power of 5 plus 4 times minus 1. So here we get 2 to the power of 1. And on this side, we get 2 to the power of 5 minus 4, which is also 2 to the power of 1. So both sides are 2. So it works. Correct? So both are correct solutions. And therefore, we get our answer. And that is x equals to 5 and x equals to minus 1. So this particular equation has two solutions right let's move on and see the next example now we have a different kind of an equation we have 1 plus 2 to the power of x minus 6 times 2 to the power of minus x that is kind of a reciprocal let's rewrite this we get 1 plus 2 to the power of x minus 6 over 2 to the power of x equals to 0 now if i multiply everything by 2 to the power of x what will i get I get 2 to the power of x plus 2 to the power of x square, right? So this gets multiplied with this, minus 6 equals to 0. Or I get 2 to the power of x plus 2 to the power of 2x minus 6 equals to 0. Now let me rearrange this. I get 2 to the power of 2x plus, I'm just switching these terms, 2 to the power of x minus 6 equals to 0. Now let us substitute... Uh, let's say let substitute 2 to the power of x as some other number. Let's say n. In that case, 2 to the power of 2x will be what? n squared. Perfect. If 2 to the power of x is n, 2 to the power of 2x is going to be n squared. And then I can rewrite this equation as n squared plus n minus 6 equals to 0. Now again, we have a quadratic equation. Do you see that? So we can again solve, as you normally solve, a quadratic equation. So let's solve this. So we have n square plus n minus 6 equals to 0. 3 times 2 is 6. So we could write this as n plus 3 times n minus 2 should be equal to 0. That gives us two solutions. n equals to minus 3 
and n equals to 2. So these are the two solutions for the given equation. Now see, n is 2 to the power of x. We made a substitution here, right? n is equal to 2 to the power of x. Now exponential functions are always positive. That means what? That means that this value is not valid. Only this value is valid. So this is valid. This is not valid. And therefore, we can say that n equals to minus 3 is not valid. Perfect. Since we cannot get a negative value for n, 2 to the power of x, we know, is always greater than 0. So we are expecting n to be greater than 0. So we are only left with one solution, which is n equals to 2 is the only solution. Do you get an idea, right? So in this case, we have an extraneous root. So we have an extraneous root, which is n equals to minus 3. So we'll write n equals to minus 3 is an extraneous root. So sometimes you may get a solution which is not the right solution. You get an idea. So now let's move on. So we have solved all the equations where we haven't used logarithms so far. Now we're looking into a very special case, seemingly simple equation. 2 to the power of x is equal to 5. So in this case, what do you notice? This, these two bases are different bases. Right? 5 is like 5 to the power of 1. Now, in such cases, you should use logarithms. Do you understand? So, you have to use logarithms in this case. Now, some of you who knows logarithms fairly well, they could straight away write down the solution. What is x equals to? We need 2 to the power of x equals to 5. And then from the rules, some of you can write down the solution in one step. And that is, let me write down the solution. If I have 2 to the power of x equals to 5, then it is kind of like this. x equals to log to the base 2 of 5. Right? So, to the base 2, that could be the solution, right? Since using the logarithmic rules, right? You remember, 2 to the power of log of 2 to the power of 5 will be equal to 5. So that gives you this solution. Okay. Now let's look into alternate method. Let me write down. Which is actually general method. I should say general method. General method is to take log both sides. So we need to take log, I'm writing log instead of logarithms as a short form. This is also a standard practice. So we'll take log on both the sides. So we are working with the equation 2 to the power of x equals to 5. So we could write this as log of 2 to the power of x equals to log of 5. Now when I write like this, then the base is 10. Using the properties of log, we could write the left side as x times log 2 equals to log 5 and x is equals to log 5 divided by log 2. So that could also be a solution. So we have two different looking solutions here. Here the base is 2, here the base is 10. Now this kind of solution you could use calculator to calculate the value. So at times, if you're looking for some decimal values, let's say to two or three decimal places, you could use calculator to find the solution. So if I do log of 5 and divide it by log of 2, I get my answer as x equals to 2.32 rounded to three decimal places 2. So that is the approximate solution using calculator. This is the exact solution. And this is the solution which we get from 
uh, we know log is inverse of exponential functions. So this is from properties of logarithms, correct? Right, so e either method could be used. Generally, we are going to use this method of taking log on both the sides. Let me take one more example. And this is the last example for the video. Here again, we have different bases, 4 and 3. 3 to the power of 1 minus 2x. Now, since I see 2x there, I'm actually adding one more strategy here. We're talking about strategies. We'll write 4 as 2 square. So in that case, we could write this left side as 2 square. That means 2 to the power of 2x equals to 3 to the power of 1 minus 2x. Now, this step which we are talking about, since we have different bases, will take log both sides. So what we get? We get log of 2 to the power of 2x equals to log of 3 to the power of 1 minus 2x. That could be written as, using the power rule of logarithms, 2x times log of 2 equals to 1 minus 2x times log of 3. Now we have 2x log of 2 on the right side expand using distributive property. So we get log of 3 minus 2x times log of 3. Now we can bring all the x terms together. So we have 2x log of 2 plus bringing it to the left side 2s log of 3 equals to log of 3. Taking 2x common, we get log of 2 plus log of 3 equals to log of 3. Right? Now from here, you can isolate x. So x, let me write first 2x, will be equal to log of 3 divided by log 2 plus log 3, correct? And x will be equals to half of that, right? Log of 3 divided by 2 times log 2 plus log 3. I mean log 3. Do you see that part? So that becomes your solution. Now this time I'll leave my solution in exact form. So the exact solution is x equals to log of 3 divided by 2 times log of 2 plus log of 3. Correct? So that is how we could actually solve this kind of a question. You could use calculator to find the approximate value of x in this case. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope you learned the strategies which could be utilized to solve exponential equations. And you also learned that in solving exponential equations, we could get extraneous roots. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. And if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.